Intercept recently leaked uh, government data indicating a little more information about the terrorist watch list. Now, there are a number of Americans on that terrorist watch list. We don't know exactly who they are or how they got on there, which is why this is such a big news story. Anyone could be a victim of this, right? And so uh, just to give you a little sense of what was leaked to The Intercept, and this is the US government guide, watch listing is not an exact science. The whole enterprise is inherent or has inherent limitations, in part because analytic judgments may differ regarding whether subjective criteria have been met. Yeah. So that's not a lot of information, um, but it gives you a little something. It shows you that they're aware of the flaws. It shows you that it's not necessarily an objective way of dealing with so-called terrorists, whether it's domestic or foreign. And so they also specify that given these realities, the US government's watch listing process attempts to safeguard the American people from a terrorist attack <laughs> while safeguarding privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties. I'm not entirely sure why the guide has terrorist in Oops. capital letters. Sorry, Probably. Caps lock. <laughs> Probably a little fear mongering there. Yeah. Um, but look, there are a number of issues because we don't know what the standards are. We don't know what the guidelines are. Um, I think that uh, you know journalists like Jeremy Scahill and Ryan Devereaux do a great job in in explaining and demonstrating why it's so problematic. Clearly written, publicly available standards subject to ongoing debate about their appropriateness, indicating how an individual could run afoul of the law. That's one thing that the terrorist watch list does not specify, yeah. right? Another thing, due process, the ability to challenge government findings before a neutral arbiter fails yeah. to do that. Checks and balances so that no one branch of government can seal a citizen's fate. Yeah fails to do that. And finally, clarity regarding whether an appeal to the government system has failed or succeeded. I mean, think about it right now. You could be on that watch list. You don't know about it. You don't get to fight against it because you don't know about it. I mean, this is a clear violation of our rights. Yeah. Yeah, and it's something, by the way, that, that liberals and conservatives in this country should instantly agree on and, and, and fight against you know, the continuation of this sort of policy. Like, I mean, crazy conservatives in this country think that we shot down, the US government shot down the plane in the Ukraine to distract from the border crisis. That's how much they don't trust this government. And yet they trust them to just put your name on a list, you don't even know, you can't find out. If you are told that you can't fly, you don't even know for sure that that's the reason why. You have no one to appeal to, as you said, no neutral arbiter. Like, you're totally distrustful about what the government is doing. When it, when it buys bullets, you think that's preparation for concentration camps or something. And yet you think it's okay for them to say, no, you can't travel, you can't leave, you can't go abroad, those sorts of things. We should totally agree on that. And it, it's odd that up until this point we haven't. It's kind of amazing that when, whenever it comes to our rights and whenever it comes to our Constitution, we're all so concerned about the Second Amendment and the ability to bear arms, but we don't care about the fact that the government is just indiscriminately collecting information on us constantly, right? Mm -hmm. Checking out what kind of porn we're watching, what we're doing in our personal lives. And then at the same time, we could be placed on a terrorist watch list without understanding why it's happening or yeah. whether or not we're even on it. Yeah. I want to read you a, a portion of The Atlantic that I think sums it up perfectly. They write, the Obama administration has tried to run a system where watch list standards are beyond public knowledge and debate and where individual determinations are made entirely within the executive branch short-circuiting checks and balances. This degree of secrecy and arbitrariness used to be considered un-American. Mostly last year we had like the discussion over whether or not the, um, the IRS was unfairly looking into the activities of conservative uh, nonprofit groups and things like that, like investigating how much of their money goes to politics. And apparently it was this huge witch hunt where they were trying to shut down conservative groups. And yet you trust them to just arbitrarily uh, put people on a list like this and not allow them to travel? No, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be in favor of that. Like, and I think the only way this is gonna be shut down is if someday like Sean Hannity or Bill O'Reilly can't get on a flight because they're on the list and then they will go on a crusade against it or you Glenn Beck does. You think Obama would ever put them on a list? No, of course not, no. but I think that's the only thing that could get them to realize how against their stated political ideology something like this arbitrary terror, terror watch list is. And the, and the thing is, whenever it comes to situations involving terrorist watch list and people that get targeted by the government, it's never the people in power. It's never public figures, mm -hmm. right? Unless the public figure, figure is really, really stirring the pot. But if yeah. that individual has any influence over public opinion on government officials, they're not going to be targeted. It's people like us, right? Yeah. It's people like, you know, in the middle of the country 
who might want to stir the pot a little bit, maybe be a little politically active. Yeah. People who don't have power. The same type of people that would do Occupy protests. Those are the people that are going to be targeted. And that's yeah. what I worry about because I don't want a climate of political intimidation. But we've already entered that environment. And it's really, really hard to scale back.